So Python, we know and we love it, of course. The, the syntax is really clear, uh, easy. You can learn uh, Python to a child of five years or six years, there is no problem. Uh, Python is just interpreted, bytecode, dynamic typing, uh, multi-platform, there is a garbage collector, sorry, garbage collector, and of course we can have a lot of different paradigm, functional, object, and the rest. About Postgres, the wonderful database engine. I know you have MySQL, SQLite, MongoDB, but I, I worked with this one, uh, I love it. In brief, just developed uh, at Berkeley in USA, Postgres 95 uh, has included a new SQL parser, and we have a new version, uh, it's the beta, uh, Postgres 9.5, okay? But this database is cross-platform, you can use it on Mac OS 6, Linux, Windows, uh, and the rest, of course, on, maybe on iOS. Uh, Super DSC test, it's transa transactional DDL, so you can modify the, the schema and make a rollback if there is a problem in the schema, with the schema, okay? We'll support the data type, data type sorry, JSON, XML, uh, if you want to use the GIS, there is no problem, there is an extension for that. If you want to create a new data type, there is uh, some extension and the documentation that you can develop everything. And of course, you have the with statement, the CTE. So, but in this talk, I don't want to explain Postgres. I just want to show you two things, the frame data wrappers and the procedural languages. So, how to start? Firstly, in the world of the Python, we have a standard. There's the BAPI 2.0. There's a PEP. This PEP is very really useful if you want to understand why the drivers for Py Python uh, have uh, the connection and the connector that's the right place, to, the right document to read. DB API will provide two concepts, the connection and the cursor. The connection is, will be used just for the connection to the database and the cursor will, use, will be used just for the, the statements, the instruction. For the connection, the DB API document proposes the connect function, the commit, the rollback, the cursor, and of course the close. The connect will create a new connection, the close will close it, of course. The commit and the rollback will play on the status of the transaction, just commit or rollback if there is an error. And the cursor will create a new cursor, a cursor on the client side, if you don't specify the name of the cursor, and a cursor on the server side if you specify the name. The difference is between is uh, if you have a very big volume of data, the cursor will be used on the server if you specify the name. About the cursor, will be used for the insert, select, update, and delete, a simple CRUD. So you can execute a query with execute function. You can close the cursor. Uh, it's a good thing to do if you develop a software. And if you want to fetch your data, your records, you can use the fetch one, fetch all, or fetch many uh, function. And of course, if you have some storage procedure, you can use the call proc. And there is the string formatting for the query. Mm -hmm. So about the string query, the string formatting, uh, I think that you know that in some PHP code, we can see some concatenation of different um, queries, and DB API proposed this string formatting. So we can use different, several types uh, in your queries. You have the Q mark, where you can specify just uh, this symbol, sorry, in English I don't know. The numeric, you can use a numerical position. For the named, you can specify just the name or your field. For the format, use the percent %s. And for the pi format, if you, are if you like to use the dict in the string formatting, you can use that, okay? So, here is a small example, just a small. We can see that we have an hypothetic driver. This driver will provide a connect function with different, several parameters. We will create a new cursor, execute a, uh, a statement, and get the result with uh, fetch one. 
So if there is an exception, we will make a rollback. And if there is no problem, just a simple commit. And of course, we will close the cursor and the connection. So I don't want to discuss with Postgres and Telnet. I'm using PsychoPG. PsychoPG is just for me the best Postgres SQL connector. Uh, you, we have some other uh, connector, but I prefer this one. And to install it, just pip install PsychoPG2. So, say PsychoPG2, just base it based on libpq. Uh, in French, pq is just the paper and the toilet. Okay. So, uh, it's a compliant with dbrpi2. Yeah, it's, it's not a joke. <laughs> The PQ is the paper in the toilet. Sorry. Multi-thread, thread safe. <laughs> so, uh, so for asynchronous and support the coroutines, uh, you can, you can uh, use the listen and the notify from Postgres. The system will support that. And of course, there is a connection pool. So uh, if you don't know, if you don't want to use a connection pools, pool, you can use PG, band, uh, PG bounce or PG pool too. Uh, and of course, we support the different types of Postgres. In this case, J JSON, Aster, and uh, of course, Integer, data type, and the rest, uh, timestamp, and the rest. And of course, we support Python 3.5. Okay. So a real example with PsychoPG. So in this example, I just use the login connection. It's a connector where you create a new connection. Automatically, it will store, it will log each connection, each request to the server. There is another con uh, login connection where you can specify the timestamp for each, the duration for each request. Okay, and the next point is just with the with statement. Instead of try to create a new connection and close it if there is an error, you can use the with statement. In this case, in this example, just create a new connection, create a cursor, and execute my query. Just that. I don't have the problem to forget, for example, the, the close for the cursor or for the, command, the, the connection. OK? So sometimes we want to use a connection pool. PsychoPG comes with that. Just a small example. It's a hypothetical example. OK? We can see that if you have some threads, you have that. If you want to use AsyncIO and PsychoPG2, just use IOPG. This library will support AsyncIO. OK? So just that. We, see, we, see, we can see that the syntax is more, is more verbose, but uh, useful. OK, next point. Object relational, relational mapping, sorry. The definition is, in computer science, it's a programming technique for converting data between uh, incompatible type system in object-oriented programming languages from Wikipedia. In this example, uh, in this part of the talk, I, I'm going to show some part with PeeWee and SQL Alchemy, a tiny ORM and a big monster. Firstly, Pwe, ah, we, we have a, a compar comparison. Pwe is just simple and easy, uh, 2,000 line of cards. Uh, there is a connection pool, will support Postgres, MySQL, SQLite, and of, of course, you can have some extension. To install it, people install Pwe. For SQL Alchemy, the champion, really complete, but really, really complete. If you want to print the PDF documentation, prepare your printer because you have, ne you have to, you need 1,000 uh, sheets of paper. Yeah, just that. So multi-database, you can, you can play with Oracle, Postgres, SQLite, SQL Alchemy, MySQL, so, and you can develop a dialect for each database. Of course, there is a connection pool. We support Python 2.6 and 3.2, and you have some extension. And of course, the documentation is really awesome. If you want to learn something, it's a good place. So, Peewee, how to create? It's a small example. I don't want to go into details. Just create a new connection to Postgres, create a model for my user, 
uh, for my user, sorry, I specified the email and the password, the, the fields. I create the table, create, just create tables. If, you, if there is some, uh, a, a migration for your schema, you can use that. Just uh, use create table. And of course, we have the transaction. No need to create a, a start transaction and a commit and a rollback. The system will, will handle that for us. So, and now we can see that there is a small crud. We read the data, we get one record, we can, uh, of course, uh, where we can, where we get the data, we save it. It's an update. And after that, we'll execute the delete. Okay? So, SQLQME, like the small bazooka. Sorry for the, the fly. Uh, I like that. So, uh, we create a new connection, an engine. We specify a declarative base. This element will be used for the models. We create the database. And of course, the tables with create whole. We create a session. It's a, for the management of the transaction. And when we had a new record in the session, automatically the system, the system will uh, add it and cre uh, create a, 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 a transaction and commit it. So, it's the same example, but with uh, SQL Alchemy. So, we try to find the record, we print them. Second example, just change a record, we create a new, we, we do an update, and the last one, just remove it. Okay? So, and now, I'm going to, to speak about the foreign data wrappers. Do you know what's a, for, a foreign data wrapper? No? You have Postgres, and you want to discuss, uh, for example, you, have a you want to integrate a company, the data from a company, and this company is using, use uh, SQL, uh, SQL Server. Mm. But uh, you don't want to develop uh, a, con a connector for SQL Server, and you can use a foreign data wrapper to ask to Postgres to discuss with SQL Server and retrieve all the data, all the data from SQL Server to Postgres automatically just with FDW. But we can do more. Uh, the FW, FDW in Python, uh, in Postgres with Python, uh, we can do some fetch for, from Twitter, from your SSS feed, from a CSV file, from an XML, from Google search, Gmail, HiMap, LDAP. Uh, you can interact with your process on, the laptop, on the, your computer with the file system. And of course, you can discuss with Postgres, Oracle, MongoDB, SQLite, and uh, with SQL Alchemy. Multicorn is just a wrapper of the foreign data wrapper in Python. A small example. In this case, I'm using the multicorn extension, just create this extension in Postgres, create a virtual server where I specify the data wrapper, and for the next point, just create a new table. This it's a, foreign, a virtual table where you can interact with, with an external server. Example, in my case, I show just I will I will get some information from my feeds, and I can play with them in Postgres with a select. Okay. So you can imagine that you want to get some data from Postgres, from, uh, from SQL Server, or I don't know, what else. Okay, from, for the procedural languages, how to extend your database engine. So what's a procedural language? Uh, we have an example, PLPGSQL, PLPython, PLPerl, uh, PLV8, but of course SQL. And uh, in this case, we can use uh, PLPG SQL for, for some storage procedure. But sometimes we have a problem because uh, we, don't, we cannot uh, interact with an external resource. And if you are using P PLPG SQL, that's very, uh, it's locked because you cannot uh, interact. So PL, PL Python, in this case, will permit to extend Postgres and create new extension. 
in this case, uh, Perl Python will support Python 2 and Python 3 and of course your favorite libraries. If you want to use NumPy or a request or I, I don't know, you can do. So uh, a small table with the, com the mapping between Postgres and Python. You see on the, the right the, the Python data, Python data by, uh, that I type, sorry, the in the long bool, a string list and dict. And on the, right, on the left the, for Postgres. So I'm going to create a new extension. There is just create the, the extension with PL Python. Create a new, a new function, str title. This one will return uh, the title of a string. The code is this one. This code is just a real Python code. OK? After that, I can use uh, str title in my SQL queries. OK? Do you have some question about that? No? Because there is a problem with that. But neither. No. So a small advanced, advanced example. How can I know the CPU in memory in percentage of one process from Postgres? Firstly, I can try to find my uh, process with uh, the PG state activity table. It's an example. And I can use this function, get paid CPU mem. But this function is defined here. I'm using the PSUtil um, library, and I can interact with the, the operating system. OK? So just import it use PSUtil process and read the data, okay? So the problem and the advantage of PL Python. Firstly, the advantage. You can add some new feature for Postgres. Secondly, you can develop a business logic in your software directly in the database. But there is a problem, you are not portable. You can use your external libraries from PyP, and of course, you have a full access to the database. You can crash it. Okay. The problem, it's unsafe. Why? Because uh, uh, Python is not a sandbox. Okay. Really difficult to maintain and to debug. Yes. No virtual half, and of course, we have to use the super user privileges. And the last point is just for the, your DBA, your friend uh, in the life. Uh, it won't be your best friend.